Yeah, what, my name's Skeina O'Flynn, and I basically have done quite a lot of work um, looking at ways rather than we can use technology to examine the power of our mind, the power of meditation, the power of observing our thoughts. I've done a lot of work in the Himalayas. I curate the Kathmandu International Art Festival, which is art for social change. I've filmed extensively in the Himalayas. So the work is very is sort of inspired by that philosophy. So um, originally with Nick Rothwell over there, at Connecticut a few years ago, the first work in this series of Circles of Light, I turned my voice into Circles of Light. Then at, in Kathmandu last time, we actually did a thing on, um, I haven't got, it's on my website, I haven't brought it today because I'm just going to perform. But we did a work with Tibetan nuns. And in their tradition, they believe in the power of sound to transform and change the mind. And, our, and bring us into a state of our own natural being, our own natural awareness. So we worked on a stupa called Bodhanath Stupa, which is a very ancient site for both the Tibetans and the Nepalese people, um, where they do kora. They walk around it in, in circles, and it's very high. It's about the size and the height of Trafalgar Square. And it's a round stupa, which is symbolic to all of the elements to them. And as the nuns sang, we extended the work into transforming their ancient chants into circles of light, so you could see the sound. And it had quite a hypnotic, profound effect, I think because of the scale and the meaning to, uh, to the locals of that, so that was great. And then this year, I was commissioned by Space Debris in Istanbul um, to do a work for voice and cello, and I decided to extend on the theme of circles of light to look at uh, my brain waves while I performed. And what we did there was we basically um, brought people into the space and asked them to be quiet. And we programmed the circles so that the calmer I was, the darker it went. <laughs> and that was the idea, was that with the cellist, we would, try, we would try and create a vibe of tranquility. But unfortunately, I could hear someone going to the loo. So every time they flushed the toilet, <laughs> my circles would, would ping out. So we've adapted that work with Eliza on arrangements, because it's very new to me, I don't read music, which was great, thank you. And we're going to, we're going to uh, work with that, a short extract, five minutes of that piece called My Mind. And we've actually um, adapted it so that it starts very quietly, and then in a section with the quartet, what's it called again when you do all that? <laughs> Yeah, they're going to be doing, making a lot of noise that I guess would not be considered a traditional classical way to play your instruments. No. <laughs> so we're going to just observe and see what happens, really. So, um, Nick, how are you doing? Still setting up. Any questions we'll take, I guess. We're not supposed to do that, though, are we? I'm going against the grain. Sorry, Andrew. Yeah, no, no, we... Um we break our own rules from time to time. <laughs> uh, we have a no, conf uh, no, uh, no PowerPoint presentations, no panel sessions rule, and okay. we've broken it every time we've done music tech Sorry. first. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm quite happy for that while we sort out this uh, setup. Well, I, I can talk a little bit more about the theory of Zogchair and the work in Kathmandu if you want this year. I, I would actually love to hear okay. some more about that. So, th so this year, like I said, so much about art and music is about industry and money and commerce. and. Uh, what they've done, a, a woman called Sangeeta Tapa in Kathmandu, which is a very f poor place. The theme this year is the city, and we're actually hopefully talking to Guardian Tech to actually bring them along to look at the ways that technology, music, and the arts can actually, as we know here, any of us that used to live, as I did, in a warehouse that I've just noticed has been knocked down around the corner 25 years ago, the power of the arts and our role in commerce, actually, and in regeneration and creating healthy areas and activity within the city. So Sangeeta brings people from all over the world. There were over 100 artists just taking over derelict spaces. There was stuff going on in the zoo. I did what I did. It was literally everywhere. And she really, really worked amazingly with the local community for them to see the arts and to see the power of sound as a way to transform the physical space that they're in. Um, so this year is actually my bizarre relationship with um, the Himalayas carries on, because it's actually the 200-year celebration of um, the relationship between England and Kathmandu. So we're also going to attempt to build a stupa in Aldershot. As you might have heard, there was some in the news uh, about a year ago, Joanna Lumley got very involved with a campaign with the Gurkhas, 
to give them permission to come over here when obviously, you know, they weren't really being given pensions, they weren't being treated very fairly. Unfortunately, that's led to a situation at Aldershot where quite a lot of elderly Nepalese have paid for flights to come here and are in homeless hostels where they're chucked out at 9 o'clock in the morning and only get back at 8, at eight o'clock or 6 o'clock at night because the level of pension the Gurkhas get isn't the same as the locals. So we're going to try and build a, an actual stupa in Aldershot because they've just got a load of money to renovate the town centre and want to s spend it on, I don't know, signage. And I'm sort of trying to persuade them that a stupa might be a cool idea to try and uh, solve some of the issues that are happening there from the influx of Nepalese and to also honour the ongoing relationship. And then we'll also be working on taking artists again, um, as we did members of the collective last time, back to Nepal, and just building on that relationship, working with the British Council again. And look, at, so anyone that's involved in art collectives, involved in art for social change, wants to get involved, come and have a chat with me about that, really. Is that someone's hand or no? I've got my glasses on. So how are we doing? OK, two minutes. So back to the philosophy. This is all ad hoc. I thought I wasn't going to be talking. The Zogchen philosophy is something that's very, very close to my heart. It's, it's a way of looking at our life. So much of this technology now, and as many of you know, I'm very opinionated about artists' rights and what I call fair trade for artists in the digital age. So much of technology is about agitation. And even though we are going to experiment with that today, what I'm really interested in is, is how can we also use technology to really, really become aware of our thoughts, not get too attached to those thoughts, and find ways to use technology to also relax. As well as, you know, I mean, I'm as guilty as anyone. We play with the new toys, we get excited by the new toys. You know, we can overemphasize and think and play. And, you know, at many levels, our brains are being dominated by these companies, the Facebooks, the Twitters, all the rest of it. And I think it's just we're at an, a stage now with technology that we really need to think of the bigger picture of how we're being marketed to, of the thinking behind some of the big companies, about whether we want to be totally geolocated to these enormous global corporations, whether we want to give them all of our beautiful content, unless they start to pay and play fair and give us access to data, give us access to, and give us money, really. It comes down to that, too. So that's, you can also come and chat to me about that. I'm hoping that Nick's now ready. Okay. Bit of sound checking and we'll dim the lights and you guys are ready, yeah? Funny having you all behind me. Let's hope the technology gods are with us, eh? I'm told it's going to be a few minutes. This is the meditation bit then, eh? This is the meditation part <laughs> of the proceedings. This is something that we have to be prepared for at Music Tech Fest because there are so many changeovers and so many technical uh, challenges. Not challenges. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, ambitions for the technology that you have to uh, expect a little bit of time for things to be worked out. You have uh, a brain thing on your head. I think. Uh, yeah, but I do. It's true. We can always just do an acoustic set. <laughs> <laughs> we can, we can start music. with that. If you, if you would like to start with that, if you we want would be very to. happy with that. But if, I think if it's looking, un should we give him one more minute? And then? We'll give him, yeah. But we have a very, not, we have a very kind and generous audience. Yeah, yeah, they're and, very well uh, a very interested audience. Um, but uh, where everybody is willing the uh, the technology to work, and the technology will work, we're almost there.
Yeah. But if you'd like there. to play us some music in the meantime, while we wait. Can I do the, uh, do you want to do an acoustic from quartet version whilst you're warming up? That sounds yeah. like a lovely thing to do. Okay. Gaynor O'Flynn and the Bergeson String Quartet. Just play. Yeah, yeah. I won't sing with this one. He's about two minutes away, I think we can work. That's about perfect. It's up to you. <laughs> Yeah, that would be great. Do you want to actually explain what you s explained to me about the actual techniques you'll be using in the break? You're not mic'd up, but you just have to talk loud, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you could ask. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, so we are a quartet that is trained in spectral music, um, which we went to Budapest, Bucharest, Bucharest, wrong country, <laughs> to go and study uh, a few years ago. And uh, a lot of you may feel that the spectral is noise, uh, which it kind of is in a way, um, but very refined noise that we spent many, many, many days, weeks um, learning. Um, and part of the noise we are going to do today for Gainer's piece is based on these techniques. Uh, so what we're going to do is just very briefly show you some of these. Um, so, Andrew, can I hand the microphone back, please? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. guys I think we're ready brilliant thank you okay we're ready to go yeah okay can we dim the house lights at all I watch my mind you watch my mind my thoughts are what you see the good the bad the in-between sometimes I think they're me
thoughts and all my thinking Here am I My words and all my being Come and go My words and all my seeing Thank you. Thanks, guys.